Happy New Year 2021 everyone. Wait, is that we should right? In this complex and diverse world, does a statement like the above generically apply? Let's validate every word up there. Happy is a state of mind. So let's keep it aside for a history blog and uh, hope that it's true for everyone. New year. Does a year get really new on January the 1st? Why? And since when? And for whom? 2021. Is this the current year? How and why? And for whom is this 2021 a current year? And lastly, everyone. Does the wish actually apply to everyone? Who does everyone refer to? After all, we as a human race can't still standardize the date format. We are struggling between DDMM and MMDD. So how do we come together on this and agree that this wish applies to everyone? Welcome to Masala History by Siva Season 2. Let's do a quick time travel for a couple of thousand years as we try to make sense of why dates are hard. No pun intended. We are strictly talking about historical dates here. So take a seat in your time machines, set the destination dial to 45 BCE to Rome, Italy. And also as we travel, I want to emphasize that this episode is purely about the European situation and maybe we can cover the timekeeping histories of other nations in some of our other trips as each of them have their own masala mix. The world's oldest calendar, given our modern day definition of it, is the Sumerian Babylonian calendar. It was a lunisolar calendar with years consisting of 12 lunar months, each beginning when a new crescent moon was first sighted low on the western horizon at sunset. This was followed by several similar calendars, the Egyptian, Assyrian, Zoroastrian, Roman, Hebrew, Chinese and the Hindu Panjanga calendar amongst others. For several hundred years in the BCE era, the Roman calendar was in effect in most of the continental Europe. The year had 304 days in all, split across 10 months, each month corresponding to the numbers. So for example, September was uh, the number 7, October was for the number 8, etc. But this was insufficient as somewhere the remaining 60 odd days needed to be accounted for so that the seasons can be predictable with months. So King Numa Pompilus of Rome introduced two new months, January and February at the end of the year after December to cover for the 60 days. Of course, February needed only 24 days as it was the last month of the year and the remaining 341 days were split across the 11 months of 31 days each. Now enter our hero Julius Caesar, the Roman consul and dictator. He realized that there was a drastic change needed as the calendars had become messy and inoperable. He dictated that the new year then, which was 709 AUC, to start from January 1. Now AUC stands for Ab Urba Condita, where the year that Rome was founded is considered as 1 AUC. So year 709 AUC started from January 1 and ran for 365 days until December 31st. So out of the blue, that's when January 1 became the new year date. A few years later, Augustus Caesar introduced the concept of leap year. This was in 4 CE. This is to adjust for the quarter of a day and this added one day every four years, solving for the extra quarter day that the Earth took to come around the sun. So February ended up having 24th twice. This practice continued to exist for a long time, even well into the 16th century. However, even with the leap year, the problem was not solved. Earth revolves around the sun in 365 days, 5 hours, 59 minutes and 16 seconds. But with the leap year happening every 4 years, correcting for 365 days and 6 hours, the time was actually leaping ahead by 44 seconds every year on average. By 1582 CE, this caused Easter dates to get very divergent from the equinox times. So Pope Gregory XIII added a modification that it is not a leap year if the year is divisible by 100 except by 400. So what that means is, so 2000 CE was a leap year but 1800 CE is not. Also, to correct for the leap that had happened so far, he decided to cut down 10 days in the month of October 1582. 
So if you look up the European calendars of October 1582, you will see that after October 4th, which is a Thursday, the next day is October 15th, which is a Friday. This is the start of the Gregorian calendar, one of the most widely accepted calendars of today. While most Catholic nations and their dominions immediately adopted this change, the others took a while. For example, England acknowledged the situation only in 1752 and finally decided to take a plunge. They repeated what happened earlier in Europe by cutting down 11 days in September of 1752. So September 2nd, 1752, which was a Wednesday, was followed by September 14th directly on Thursday, and this brought their calendar in sync with the rest of Europe. Imagine the confusion people may have had in those times. I don't even want to bring Russia or Greece into this, as they had their own twist to the calendar even as late as the early 20th century. Compared to this confusion, Y2K is no challenge after all. Thankfully, the Gregorian calendar more or less stuck, and with colonization, it spread globally as well, thus bringing most countries into some sort of a sync on dates. The Gregorian calendar gained a lot of acceptance in Europe early on. but countries like japan china russia and greece took their own time the kingdom of saudi arabia adopted the gregorian calendar just 4 years back in the year 2016 it is another thing that the world has continued to create new calendars like the indian national calendar in 1957 the french republic calendar in 1793 the north korean hoshe calendar in 1997 etc and there are several new calendar standardization proposals like the international fixed calendar invariable calendar etc thus we the people of the world have not come into agreement even today on a topic like timekeeping which some might consider simple and straightforward we are so diverse that it is not surprising that we simply cannot agree to one uniform thing but perhaps in this diversity lies the colorfulness and fun of life possible that it is a new year in some calendar every single day and if so so what maybe we can wish every single day as if it were a fresh beginning a start of a brand new year on that note happy new year everyone stay safe and may 2021 be kind to us all i will see you soon with yet another masala history until then take care goodbye